Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.5.6 and Razbam Sims AV8B Harrier Module. Welcome to Tutorial 6, Sensors. Today we're going to go over all of the onboard sensors that the Harrier has, and uh, these, some of these can also be used for target designation, which will be the main point of today's video. Uh, the, the Harrier is actually quite a capable air aircraft, and even without carrying uh, the targeting pod and without having a radar integrated, which of course many modern aircraft do, uh, you've got many ways in which you can target things and uh, get accurate weapon drops. So I'm going to go through them all in turn. Uh, the first is the ARBS, or the Angle Rate Bombing System. This is less a sensor and more of a bombing computer, um, but it's pretty clever because it uses just some very simple parameters, so the system knows your aircraft's altitude above the ground using the radar altimeter, knows your airspeed, and when you're using uh, a sensor like the DMT to target something, it knows the angle, uh, almost certainly the angle down from the nose, to the target, and it measures the rate at which that angle changes as your aircraft flies towards the target. And it uses that to, to work out the target's exact position without having a terrain database or a laser ranger. Uh, this aircraft isn't fitted with a laser at all. So this is pretty impressive. And this allows this, this is the system that actually generates all of the symbology in the HUD, uh, giving you indications about when to drop weapons in CCIP and CCRP modes. So a very, very clever passive bombing system, uh, the ARBS. The next thing that we have is the DMT, or the Dual Mode Tracker. Now, the Dual Mode Tracker is the uh, glazed dome in the nose of the aircraft here. And this is the aircraft's primary targeting sensor. Uh, it's a fixed 6 times TV day sight. It doesn't have a manual zoom. Um, it's, you know, 1980s technology, so it's a, it's a bit basic. But uh, it's a monochrome. And it has the ability to track stationary targets and moving targets that you put the gate over. It uses contrast in order to uh, track uh, things that are moving. Uh, so that's the, the first mode of the dual mode tracker. Uh, second mode is LSS, or laser spot search. So while the aircraft doesn't have its own laser, it does have a laser detector. And so if you have uh, ground troops with a laser designator, they can illuminate a target for you and your LSS will pick that up and display its exact position on your HUD. It will also automatically slew the DMT TV center, sensor to it as well, so you can see exactly what uh, is being targeted. That then allows you to drop either conventional bombs very accurately uh, on a, a target given to you by ground troops, or of course drop a laser guided bomb if you're in possession of the correct laser code. Um, this can also, of course, be used uh, with other aircraft in order for them to buddy lays on your behalf. Uh, and again, you can either drop conventional or laser-guided munitions on that uh, target. The next thing that we have is the nav fleur, and that's actually the aperture a little bit further up on the nose here with a hump. Uh, that's a, a navigational forward-looking infrared camera. This is primarily used for flying at night. It's not exactly a targeting sensor. Um, it doesn't provide any ability to track a target or designate a target, but it's very useful when flying at night. On the real aircraft, it has something called a hotspot detector. Uh, and so it would display little correct symbols in your HUD uh, anywhere that it detects what it considers could be a target, uh, an enemy vehicle or troops per se. That's not currently simulated in DCS, but I believe that RASBAM are looking into the possibility of adding that functionality. The next sensor that we have is the INS. Uh, it's nothing that's visible from the outside of the aircraft, but that's the Inertial Navigation System. This is a set of gyroscopes which, uh, well, I could go into a lot of detail about how INS works, but let's just say it tells your aircraft exactly where it is at any given moment. Uh, it's also paired with a GPS in the modern versions of the Harrier uh, so that it gets uh, updates to avoid drift. Um, this system allows you to uh, target, um, well, to generate target points if you have the coordinates of the, uh, the enemy uh, position that you want to attack, or uh, you can actually move uh, a target point on the moving map and actually designate a target using ground features in effect. 
So that's the INS. Uh, and then lastly, we have the ATHS, which is the Automatic Target Handoff System. This is a data link. Um, I believe it can be used to communicate between Harriers, but uh, actually its primary use is with a JTAC or some kind of ground force. They can actually transmit very accurate target information directly to your aircraft, and it then appears both on the EHSI and in a special page called the CAS page uh, in the aircraft. And you can have multiple target points, and they can be used for the deployment of JDAMs um, and other well, actually, you can also use it for unguided weapons because it will generate a CCRP uh, target for you. So that's the, the overview of all of the sensors. One last thing that I'm going to do before we actually go out to the range and demonstrate these systems is I'm going to go over the HOTAS commands because the nice thing in the Harrier is that uh, almost all of the sensor functionality can be controlled uh, via HOTAS, which is hands on throttle and stick. So you've got buttons and multi-way switches on your throttle and your stick that allow you to control these systems. So let's very quickly take a look at those and just make sure that you have those mapped before we begin. The first one that we're interested in is called the sensor select switch and it's listed here in the HOTAS commands. It has, uh, it can be pushed forward, aft, left, right and it can be depressed as a down action as well. So you want to make sure that you have that set up. This is primarily used to select which sensor you're working with, uh, and in some cases even switch the mode of the sensor. The other one that's very important for us is called the TDC, or the Target Designation Cursor. Uh, this is a four-way switch also with a depress, uh, and this is primarily used to steer your sensor most commonly the TDC, the um, DMT, but it can also be the INS. Uh, and it has a depress function. The depress function is normally to designate a target. Speaking of designate, you're going to need the ability to undesignate or clear a target. That's done uh, using the target undesignate nose wheel steering FOV toggle button. This is the button that you're normally holding down when you're on the ground to use the nose wheel steering. But when you're in the air, tapping this button will undesignate a target. And that covers all of the standard controls that you're going to need. So, without further ado, let's make our way out to the range. I'll see you all there. Okay, you join us again here in the cockpit en route to the target range. Uh, I'm now going to go over the functions of the sensor select switch very quickly. Um, just as a quick re recap, we already went over sensor select switch left in the navigation tutorial previous, uh, but I'll very quickly address it here. Uh, it, it actually controls the left MPCD and it mostly controls EHSD functions. So we've got the EHSD here on the left uh, MPCD. If I press sensor select uh, switch left, it decenters it. If I press left again, it brings up the EW page. And if I press left a final time, I get the normal EHSD display. So that's uh, a quick recap of that. I'm now going to go back to the right MPCD because most of uh, the sensors actually display on the right-hand MPCD. So uh, next we'll take a little look at the DMT. This is accessed by pressing sensor select switch aft. The first time we press it, we're going to go into LST mode. I actually called it LSS mode earlier, but that was because that's the name of that mode in the Lightning 2 targeting pod. Uh, in the DMT, it's called LST, which is Laser Spot Track. And uh, by default, the code uh, push button is boxed, and we can see in the UFC that it says 1111. That's the default laser code in this aircraft. I'm going to change it to the more commonly used, uh, just going to reselect that, 1688. Enter. And that's that code now selected. We can click again to unbox it. Uh, the next feature we have is narrow, HUD, and wide. This controls the search pattern for the laser spot tracker. Uh, so the standard is wide. You can see that's quite a long scan, and it's actually uh, that symbology is reproduced on the HUD itself. You see the box moving back and forth. Um, if you know that you're pushing, that your uh, nose of your aircraft is actually quite close to the laser spot, you put it into a narrow mode, and it does a much quicker scan. And then it also has this mode called HUD, which is even narrower and it just scans a small area of the HUD. Now, I'm going to leave it on wide for just now. The other push button that we have here that does something is night mode. If I press night mode, by default it that uh, inhibits the display 
from showing us TV mode of the dual mode tracker. I'll turn it off just now very quickly so that I can actually show you that. So sensor select switch aft will normally switch you between LST and TV. And TV mode is the normal TV camera targeting mode. Uh, if I'm in TV mode and I select night, it will inhibit the display of an image. This is done when flying at night because for one thing, during night time, the TV sensor is useless <laughs> unless you have illumination flares. But the other thing is it really lights up the cockpit. Um, and when you're wearing night vision goggles, uh, that bright light can be very troubling. So when you're flying at night, you would tend to enable night mode. We're going to turn it off and again, we get a, a TV picture back straight away. So by default, the uh, TV mode will be looking directly at wherever our flight path marker is. So if we go back up to the HUD here, we can see actually that our flight path marker is up at the sky. And it has a little dot in the middle telling us that currently the, the targeting sensor is looking directly there. Um, so what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to uh, switch off the active pause. Oh, that's the wrong button. There we go, active pause is now off. So you'll see that as I manoeuvre the aircraft, the TV is now showing images of the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly it rather close to our target here, and I'm going to press TDC Depress. And now I'm going to pull back up to the, well, towards the horizon, and I'm going to re-enable active pause. There we go. Actually, I'm going to turn it off again and angle the aircraft down a little bit so I can still see the HUD, uh, HUD symbology because I want to show you all the HUD symbology at the same time. Okay, so you'll see that there is now, the circle is actually just our waypoint, that's, uh, that's got nothing to do with the DMT, but if I now use the TDC to slew around, while I'm slewing, the box has these lines around it to give me orientation information, and then when I release, it's just a box with a dot in it showing me exactly where the sensor is looking. Uh, if I focus back on the left MPCD, you'll see that as I slew around, the image moves, I would put it on the target that I want and depress TDC. And that is now my current target point. And I can confirm that by moving over to the EHSD, where I have a diamond symbol. This diamond symbol here is exactly where the DMT is currently looking, and that is my current target point. So that would now actually be me in business uh, in order to deploy a weapon if I wanted to. And that is actually pretty much the, the full functionality of the DMT. It's a fixed zoom, it doesn't have infrared, it only has a daytime camera. Uh, this is all it can do, it can just slew and lock. Uh, and if that was a moving target, it would in fact track it as well, but it's not in this case. One extra feature of the DMT view that you get is that your weapons profiles appear across the top of the screen. So you don't actually need to bring up your stores page to select a weapon. In this case, I've got Mark 82 bombs on board the aircraft. I could simply click this push button here to select the weapons and I'd be ready to deploy them. Okay, next we're going to take a look at FLUR. The FLUR functionality can be accessed by pressing sensor select switch right. So if I press sensor select switch right once, I get the FLUR display on my right hand MPCD. If I press it again, it then switches to black hot mode, the default is white hot. If I press sensor select right again, I'm returned to white hot mode. On this display, uh, again you've got your weapons profiles across the top, you also have reg for reject. If I press that, it will remove the additional symbology from the screen, which is the horizon line and my current flight path marker. And that's pretty much all the functionality that's currently implemented. There are the buttons here, but they currently don't do anything. Uh, I think they're to do with the, the laser, sorry, the, the hotspot search and things like that. Uh, I think it's also possible to manually adjust gain and level, but they're not functional currently in the sim. Next, we're going to take a look, little look at the INS. So if I press sensor select forward, you can see that I switch to mode INS. It actually doesn't change which on the screen because INS mode doesn't have any corresponding symbology on here. But what it does do is it allows us to reposition our target point using the map. So if I switch over to the left MPCD here, where we have the EHSD, 
and I go ahead and select data and I've currently got waypoint and I've got waypoint 5 I can now use the TDC to reposition uh, waypoint 5 as you can see here and if I wanted to make that permanent I could then press TDC depress and you can see now that the circle for waypoint 5 has shifted position now it should be possible for me to do this with any type of waypoint so that should also apply to target point 0 I can also shift this around just like that and if I had mark points and things like that I could also do the same and if I come out of data mode that is then unlocked Okay, and now lastly the ATHS, which is the Automatic Target Handoff System. This is the, the data link that we can receive targets uh, from JTACs and similar, uh, similarly equipped ground forces. So the way that's simulated in the sim right now is you can create uh, mark points in the F10 menu. I've just pressed F10 to go to the menu screen uh, and you use the mark label functionality here, this circle. And if you click that, you can place mark labels on the map. Now, I've already placed a few of them. They need to be named in a very particular way. So first, I've created this one here, T00. This is just placed in the general area. It's one throwaway mark point. Um, the system requires there to be one in the system first. I always just label it T00, because that's the same naming scheme that the other ones use in any case. It's always a capital letter T and then two digits. Then this vehicle here, I've marked T01 as my first target. Here, T02 is my second. And here, T03 as my third. Once we've created these uh, mark labels in the F10 menu, we can simulate having these positions transmitted to us by pressing right shift, right alt, and the number zero. That's right shift, right alt, and the number eight. Uh, and that's now going to be transmitted into our cockpits. So if we press F1 uh, on our MPCD, I'm on the main menu, and it's the CAS page that we want to use. If I select CAS, we will now see, uh, well actually it's easier if I go into recall. If I go into recall, you'll see that I now have three targets that have been transmitted to me. They're now loaded into the ATH, uh, ATHS system, and I can cycle through them using these arrows on the left-hand side. So to actually make use of these with, say, a JDAM, uh, I come back to normal CAS page, this is the first target, and I press the use button. So I press use, and I'm going to need to go to the UFC for this bit, and it says zero. Currently this is not used as a target point. I'm going to choose one and press enter, and you can now see it says active. If I go back to the recall page, you can also see that it says T1 next to this one. This is now target one. I can do the same thing with the second one. I can press use, enter 2, enter, and it, it confirms on the UFC as well, T2, and it says active on this page. Back to recall, I've now got T1 and T2. I'm going to do the same with the very last one, just to be complete. So use, 3, enter, and we now have three target points. If I go back to the recall page, I can see those there. Now, we're not going to cover the rest of this system in this video, but when I cover JDAMs, you'll then see that it's very easy, once you select a JDAM, to choose that target point, just to choose that you want it to attack target 1, target 2, or target 3. So, I hope you all enjoyed that brief overview of the sensors built into the AV-8B Harrier. If you haven't already, please subscribe and like. It's a really big help, and I'll see you all next time.